Okay. So, well, it didn't take long to have violence happen this election season. Fires set in drop boxes destroy hundreds of ballots in Washington and damage three in Oregon. And apparently it's one asshole who's doing all of them. And all we see is a car. And I made the mistake of looking at some Twitter comments. I don't recommend that because I think I got dumber reading them. But anyway, to the article. Incendiary devices were set off Monday at a two ballot drop boxes, one in Portland and another in nearby Vancouver, Washington, destroying hundreds of ballots in what one official called a direct attack on democracy about a week before a heated election day. Because nothing says... Um, election, you know, a free and fair election, then destroying ballots. And I don't think we have to guess what side of the political spectrum this moron is on. The one that is questioning drop boxes. So, yeah. Especially since this is a... Since this is a, um, this is in a democratic stronghold, both Washington and Oregon are very strongly democratic, so I don't know what this moron is thinking that they're accomplishing, because it's not like Kamala Harris is going to lose because those three boxes got destroyed and God knows how many ballots. So now, either the, the, um, the district that, where the drop box is in, or the voters are going to have to find out if their ballot was in that drop box. Hopefully, there's going to be a shout out that, okay, if you dropped your ballot in between this time and the fire, then we're going to have to get you a new ballot because it's been incinerated or something. Because nothing says disenfranchisement like, you know, burning someone's ballot. The early morning fire at the drop box in Portland was extinguished quickly thanks to a suppression system inside the box, as well as a nearby security guard, police said, and just three ballots were damaged there. Still, they're going to have to get a hold of those three people and tell them, you know, your ballots have been damaged beyond recognition, you're gonna ha we're gonna have to send you a replacement ballot or come to city hall and we'll issue you a replacement ballot or something depending on how damaged they are but within a few hours another fire was discovered at transit center drop box across the columbia river in vancouver vancouver is the biggest city in washington's third congressional district the site of what is, bleh, what is expected to be one of the closest U.S. House races in the country. Between first-term Democrat Representative Marie Glusenkamp Perez and Republican challenger Joe Kent. Okay, so that might explain why in a Democratic stronghold this could have happened, but it doesn't explain why that first one was. Not that it's, I condone that regardless, because what the fuck, dude? The ballot box in Vancouver also had a fire suppression system inside, but that failed to prevent hundreds of ballots from burning, says Greg Kimsey, the longtime elected auditor of, in Clark County, Washington, which includes Vancouver.
He urged voters who dropped their ballots in the transit center box after 11 a.m. Saturday to contact his office for a replacement ballot. Good on him. He's taking initiative. We now know, okay, this is when... um. The last time we removed ballots, so this this is when you should consider, you know, your ballot has been destroyed. So that that's good to see. Heartbreaking, Kimsey said. It's a direct attack on democracy. Well, yeah, because these people don't care about democracy. They just want their guy to win, whomever that happens to be. Because we've seen that it doesn't necessarily have to be the presidential candidate. But regardless, what the hell are you doing? Seriously, what did you think you were accomplishing by destroying ballots? The office will be increasing how frequently it collects ballots and changing collection times to the evening, Kimsey said, to keep the ballot boxes from remaining full of ballots overnight when similar crimes are considered more likely to occur. Okay, um, you know, I understand why they change the collection times for the ballots because... The whole point of a collection of a drop box is for when you're after hours. So say you can't get to the city hall by five o'clock, which is when most city halls close. Well, if you, you know, so of course you're going to put the ballot in at say five thirty or six. You're not going to wait till the next morning to do it. Or maybe you're going to drop it off before you go to work when um, City Hall might still be closed. That's a possibility, too. Ballot drop boxes have faced increasing criticism from Republicans and have been the focus of baseless right-wing conspiracy theories in recent years tied to former President Donald Trump's lie that the 2020 election was stolen from him. Which, again, is butkus. It's been shown many, many times, it's Butkus. An Associated Press survey of state election officials across the U.S. found that there were no widespread issues with drop boxes in 2020 and none that could have affected the results. Six states have banned ballot drop boxes since 2020. Arkansas, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, South Carolina, and South Dakota according to research by the Voting Rights Lab, which advocates, which advocates for expanding voting access. Other states have restricted their use, including Ohio and Iowa, which now permits only one drop box per county, according to the Brennan Center for Justice. Really? Um, and from what I can see, I mean, North Carolina is a swing state, but everything else looks like a deep red state. So, there is that. <coughs> and possibly Ohio. But otherwise, yeah. Washington and Oregon, which are both vote by mail states, have long used ballot drop boxes. Authorities said at a news conference in Portland that enough material from the incendiary devices were recovered to show that the two fires Monday were connected and that they were also connected to an October 8th incident when an incendiary device was placed at a different ballot drop box in Vancouver. No, da no ballots were damaged in that incident. Surveillance images captured a Volvo pulling up to a drop box in Portland, Oregon, just before security personnel nearby discovered a fire inside the box on Monday. Portland Police Bureau spokesman Mike Brenner told a news conference, the incendiary devices were attached to the outside of the boxes. The FBI was also investigating. The fire suppression system inside the ballot drop boxes in Washington and Oregon were designed to activate when the temperature inside reaches a certain point 
coating ballots with a fire suppressing power. Powder. The system appeared to have worked in the Portland drop box, and security staffers were nearby to help out put out the fire. Mut Mut okay, hold on. Multnomah County Elections Director Tim Scott said the county has contacted with private security officers to have roving patrols that drive around the county 24 hours a day and put eyes on all drop boxes. He said one of the guards was at the county elections office, heard what sounded like a blast, likely the activation of the fire suppression system, and called police. For unknown reasons, the system failed to prevent the destruction of hundreds of ballots in Vancouver. Glusen Com Perez said in a statement that she is requesting an overnight law enforcement presence posted at all drop ballot drop boxes in Clark County through Election Day. Southwest Washington cannot risk a single vote being lost to arson and political violence, her statement said. In a video posted on the social platform X, Kent also condemned the cowardly act of terrorism. He said he trusted law enforcement to find out who was responsible, urged voters to make sure their ballots are counted, and said he continues to have faith in the ballot drop box system in Washington. So it's nice to know that both sides are saying the same thing. That is good to hear. No one should be intimidated, Kent said. Voters were encouraged to check their ballot status online at www.votewa.gov to track its return status. If a return ballot is not marked as received, voters can print a replacement ballot or visit their local elections department for a replacement, the Secretary of State's office said. John Burnside, 68, said he and his wife dropped off their ballots at the Vancouver box Sunday afternoon and learned about the fire the next morning on the news. He checked the status of their ballots, did not see that they had been received by election officials, and requested new ones. They now plan to either mail their ballots or deliver them in person, he said. Which is sad, because that's the point of the drop boxes, so you don't have to do that. I'm certainly in favor of in-person voting simply because you know your ballot goes through right then, he said. It may be extra work, but it does add a level of security. Officials in Portland were able to identify the three voters who ba whose ballots were damaged and planned to contact them and provide replacement ballots. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office said it would be increasing uniformed and played closed patrols around the drop boxes. Washington Secretary of State Steve Hobbs said the state would not tolerate threats or acts of violence meant to derail voting. I strongly denounce any acts of terror that aim to disrupt lawful and fair elections in Washington state, he said. In Phoenix last week, officials said roughly five ballots were destroyed and others damaged when a fire was set in a drop box at a U.S. Postal Service station there. And that is the end of that article, but Jesus Christ. I mean, I, t I guess the point is to show how in unsecured the ballot box is, so, they, so people will decide not to have them. It's like, dude, the only person who's making them un insecure is you. So, yeah. Yeah, nobody thinks that when they say, yes, let's put a drop box, nobody thinks, oh, some asshole might set it on fire. Or, you know, there's a fire suppressing system, so maybe they figured there might be. But anyway, um, even in my, well, not my city, because I live right outside it, but even in Wassa, the mayor Doug Dinney, who for like the past decade I've been calling Dinny, decided to do a stunt. And before the ballot bo drop box was active, 
So it wasn't secured yet because, and there weren't any ballots because, again, they it wasn't ready for ballots. So they, it was still labeled as do not use. Decided that it he was going to take take the ballot, take the drop box, and put it in his office because the thing wasn't secured down. Even though everybody knew that, that's why it was labeled do not use. Because it was going to be secured that following Monday. And this was Sunday. And he decided to, I mean, let's face it. He he decided right then and there. Not because it wasn't secure, but he knew it would be secured on Monday and ready for ballots. So he had to go and take it when he did. And for his efforts, he is now in a boatload of trouble. The Wisconsin DOJ has even raided his house. Now, I would like to think that they had probable cause to do that. Um, and so I'm not going to say either way whether it was heavy-handed because I don't know the details. But yeah, that is the lengths that that side will go to, through to prevent people from voting. Because let's face it, even with early voting, even with being able to mail in your ballot, thanks to Trump and Louis DeJoy, people do not trust the mail system. Um, and so, so some people feel more comfortable dropping off their ballot. Unfortunately, they can't always do it during um, the times when City Hall, Village Hall, wherever you are, is open. So it's just easier to drop it off in a drop box so you don't have to worry about coming in during office hours. So, um, yeah, I just think it's so childish to burn the ballot. Is there a legit question about these boxes? Absolutely. And if you want to go to your city council meetings or village council meetings, what, wherever you are, and have that discussion, fine. But I wonder how many of these idiots who do shit like that don't bother to engage, engage um, City Hall, engage their their um, representatives and just take matters into their own hands. You can't decide on your own to do this. If you want to bring up issues, that's perfectly fine. In Wisconsin, the Supreme Court has held that whether or not drop boxes will be available is up to the municipal clerk. So it's not even our it's not even the mayor's decision. And he wanted to bring it in front of the city council, which again is not their decision to make. It's the city clerk's decision. And so what 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 do you think you're accomplishing? Just because you don't like the decision and you ran against it? Okay, you still can't do anything about it. So, same thing here. If you don't like something, at least go within the law. If the law says um, you take it up with the, the next city council meeting, then you go to the city council meeting and you let your thoughts be known. Or if you can't go for whatever reason, send a proxy. Those are a thing. But to set fire to government property, which a Dropbox is, it's government property, you're just asking for a lot, a world of hurt. Because even though the picture I saw was just of a Volvo, unless you, um, hid your license plate 
I'm pretty sure they can get a close-up look of it and figure out who did this. And when they do, you are going to really wish you never did anything. Because again, you don't like drop boxes, then don't use them. There are people who find it convenient and useful. Let them use the drop boxes. The fact that we have your fucking car on camera and that there was a fire suppression system shows that it is freaking secure. So basically, if you're wanting to show that the ballot drop box isn't a secure way of voting, you pretty much showed the opposite. Because people are being contacted, they're being told, okay, we'll send you a replacement ballot. So your, your little stunt didn't really do anything. Yes, there may be some people who are like, okay, we're not putting in Dropbox again because there might be another asshole who decides to set it on fire. But... Basically, people are going to see what you did and see that it's not going to it's not going to be worth whatever the punishment is when they find your ass and convict you of election interference, of arson. I mean, you're you're going to be suffering so much more than the people who lost their ballots. Because they're going to get a new one, and they're going to still be able to vote. You, however, your ass is going to jail. So anyway, that is all I have for this video. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.